Good evening, my name is Sabrina Phillips and we are going to be discussing Nancy Schottero and her life and contributions to social theory. Uh, this is for our social theory class with Dr. Brooks and this is the theorist that I decided to choose. She has made a lot of contributions to social theory in terms of gender norms and roles of women in society and she argues a lot about breaking down those stereotypes and barriers. So please bear with me. We're going to go through a little bit of her biography, some of her notable works and contributions, as well as an excerpt from our book, uh, Le Maire, and her reproduction of mothering. A little bit about uh, Nancy. Her name was uh, Nancy Julie Chattero. She was born in New York in 1944. She's previously married with two children and uh, teaching runs in her family because she was married a professor and her father was also a professor of uh, economics. Now she's a self-described interpretive humanistic psychoanalytic sociologist and psychoanalytic feminist. <clears throat> uh, she's earned her PhD in sociology and psychoanalytic training from Rhino University. She has uh, multiple fellowships and just to name a few uh, from Guggenheim Foundation, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the American Council of Learned Sciences, and Stanford Center for the Advanced Study. Uh, she's also received numerous awards and recognitions. <clears throat> Some are the Distinguished Contribution to Women in Psychoanalysis Award, the Jesse Bernard Award of Sociologists for Women in Science, or Women in Society, as well as the Bryce uh, Boyer Prize of Society for Psychological Anthropology. Uh, she's a member of the American Sociological Association and the National Women's Study Association. And she's also a fellow of the Russell Sage Foundation. So she's definitely uh, paved her way in uh, this field and made numerous um, contributions to it. <clears throat> Some of her notable works, uh, these are just a few, individualizing gender and sexuality, theory and practice, the power of feelings, personal meaning and psychoanalysis, uh, femininities, masculinity, sexualities, Freud and beyond, uh, feminism and psychoanalytic theory, and the reproduction of mothering, and that is the one we're actually gonna be doing the excerpt from uh, in this presentation. <clears throat> Uh, she's taught women's studies and sociology. Um, again, she's an author of multiple books, her central focus being on women and uh, roles in child rearing. Uh, the reproduction of mothering, psychoanalysis, and sociology of gender. Uh, women are naturally seen as the automatic caretaker, primary parent um, due to sexual and gender roles. Um, the notion of more men taking the primary caretaker role that is slowly coming to fruition. And she also knows that not all women are predisposed to be maternal and mothering. Uh, in this, uh, she discusses Freud's thoughts on the Oedipal complex and how he believes men want to kill their father and marry their mother. And in reverse, the daughter wants to kill their mother and marry their father. Well, Chauro argues against that and states that they actually don't want to kill their mother, they actually want to keep that uh, connection to them, and they transfer uh, this desire towards another man. <clears throat> Boys, they can separate themselves from their mothers and grow up without that need for identification from their relationships. Girls are brought up uh, with known social, gender roles, and society wants them to operate in that context. Um, she learns that her intended position in society is of that, the willful obeying daughter, and uh, that's what society wants. Um, Chatter questions what happens when the, the girl rejects that notion and doesn't identify with the mother. Um, boys are raised and must learn the role of masculinity uh, through their father, either with or without, because they're not always present. And the child is dependent on the mother initially for their initial mental and physical and emotional state. And <clears throat> that only develops through their sense of separation, whereas the father, he's seen as a separate entity uh, from the get-go. 
uh, Schwader also argues that the notion that um, women are nationally seen as the caretaker and and that's just uh, based off of sex, sex and gender roles in society that have been predisposed on them. And, but she states that not all women are automatically predisposed to be mothering or nurturing. Another one of her works is Feminism and Psychoanalytic Theory, uh, where she discusses uh, men's need to repress the urge for love or desire. Um, they tend to retreat from women who can give them love and they seek out romantic relationships when they fall in love, whereas women tend to search for love in terms of economic and financial aspects. Sorry about that. Um, she also states that the, um, the need for love doesn't go away, and so um, the men seek out women in a narcissistic manner. If the father were more present, they, uh, she feels maybe the emotional state of the male uh, would be less distorted and his interactions would actually be more positive and mutually beneficial with them. <clears throat> the women, the girls tend to have uh, more of that close relationship with their mother and therefore they don't have that strong need for that connection with the, the father. Um, she feels men, uh, this fault is based off insecurities rather than power, whereas the men, you know, they do what they do women follow roles based off of what society does and they just want them um, to exist and fulfill those gender roles. <clears throat> and Shadow also talks about the complexity of the Oedipal complex, uh, the lasting effects it can have on future relationships and the initial impacts from mother um, on their child sets a pattern for sexual inequality from the get-go. Uh, and the power of feelings, individual feelings are expressed both internally and externally in how gender, cultural, and life experiences play a role. Uh, Shadow was discussing how we have an inner and external self, and these are both affected by gender or, uh, and cultural, societal roles, um, and how they impact how we interact with others based off those roles. Um, Relationships are expressed through feelings, and these uh, inner and outer self can change over time. Uh, there's a definitive fixed identity, but gender and culture play a big part of that. But she also suggests a need for further study, uh, for to study the unconscious need to create fantasy <clears throat> and perceive reality through psychoanalysis. So this is something she wants to continue to work on. Okay, this is an image of Nancy Chattero, um, one of her quotes <coughs> on her excerpt, The Reproduction of Mothering. Uh, the mother is the early caregiver and primary source of identification for all children. The daughter continues to identify with the mother. And again, she's talking about how um, the sex gender system which women perpetuate the mothering process through ingrained social roles that men will never inherit. Uh, they continue to have that connection with the mother um, as opposed to what the boys need. Uh, again, she discusses how Freud's Oedipal, Oedipal Triangle um, with women still identifying more with the mother instead of the need to kill them. Uh, there's a triangle to fill that and she needs that not just with a partner but with a child to fulfill their emotional needs whereas men don't need that they feel a child will just uh, be in the way and they only need that partner uh, they grow up relating to the maternal figure and learn empathy and the caring capacity for parenting uh, the means of reproduction are innate in our continuous cycle within society and the division of labor with this i want to read from the mayor in our textbook on page 318 on the right hand side uh, first paragraph social reproduction is thus asymmetrical women in their domestic role reproduce men and children physically psychologically and emotionally women in their domestic role as house workers reconstitute themselves physically on a daily basis and reproduce themselves as mothers emotionally and psycholo psychologically in the next generation 
They thus contribute to the perpetuation of their own social roles and position in the hierarchy of gender. What she's saying from uh, what I can interpret is that we, women tend to repeat the cycle uh, in a patriarchal uh, men's society that the women continue to raise the men and the girls and they continue to raise them. The men continue to do what they do. The women continue to do what they do. And society and social norms, gender norms, they all play a part in this and it just perpetuates um, the cycle. Now, one of the strengths in our arguments um, that I feel is that men don't need relationships to define themselves. <clears throat> and which which is true they tend not to to need that they they do what they do they're going to be masculine and, and it's a man's world <clears throat> uh she says she gives they give birth to future men and women in a male dominant society and they provide love and guidance and support um but also one of the weaknesses is the notion that women are predisposed to mothering due to men's lack of emotional availability um, <clears throat> that's not necessarily the case. Uh, not all women are naturally inclined or predisposed to be mothers. They don't all have that caring or nurturing need or the need to be that way. Um, and not all men are emotionally unavailable um, and they can actually take care of children and actually provide stability and st uh, support regardless of the fact that they're a man and not a woman. So that's just a couple areas I found to be uh, questionable <clears throat> in her uh, uh, excerpt. Mm, according to Nancy Chattero, parenting as an unpaid occupation outside the world of public power entails lower status, less power, and less control of resources than paid work. Um, unfortunately, taking care of children is not seen as an actual job or actual work or something to be praised upon um, and they automatically put it as the woman to do it um, when in fact taking care of children is actually one of the most important most rewarding and valuable uh, jobs in life if you want to call it that <clears throat> see Uh, in conclusion, Nancy Chattero, um, she's had a, a lot of impacts on social science, a lot of her feminist uh, aspects, her roles, her thoughts in society and about gender roles. Um, she's contributed a lot in terms of how we see the uh, feminist differences and thought processes on uh, both how men and women are treated in society. Um, her psychoanalytic views, taking into consideration the notion that once inner workings of the subconscious, fantasy world, reality, and experiences of the individual are important areas requiring deeper understanding. Um, she noted in one of her own articles uh, the fact that she wished she had known years ago uh, what she knows now, and if she could go back and talk to her earlier, younger self, she probably would have given um, a different insight and different thoughts and guidance in some of her um, conversations with other people and her thought process on the roles and you know how things should be <clears throat> and again with the notion she goes back to Freud again with um, how the you know women don't need to to get rid of their mothers. They, they want that connection and they help support other women and themselves and help raise each other and bring each other up. And they, uh, they look for the um, support in other ways, financially, economically, and it's not necessarily love per se. Whereas the men, they continue doing what they're doing and not necessarily uh, needing to be defined by those relationships. They need to go out <clears throat> and do their own thing and they search for romantic love with the woman, but they don't let that be the defining factor in their lives. 
this is one of her uh, quotes out of the book, um, women, mother, daughters who, when they become women, mother. And I found this to be interesting because, again, when we talk about that perpetuating cycle, um, it's kind of contradictory. They take care of their girls. They, um, they don't lose that connection. They continue on and stay close and then uh, raise each other up. And then as that child becomes a woman themselves, they birth the next generation who may or may not um, follow the same suit. They could maintain that same connection or those women who aren't predisposed to be mothers, uh, they might not be able to do it. They might not be the mothering type. They might not have empathy or compassion. Um, whereas the men also might be emotionally available and they might be able to provide that support and help raise that family member if they're around. I just thought it was an interesting quote and everything. <clears throat> but overall, in the grand scheme of things, her contributions to uh, feminism and social theory and the different uh, thought process on uh, gender norms and societal roles and expectations placed on women. Um, she's contributed a lot and I think she's well worth researching. I found stuff on um, Google and the Troy uh, University Library as well as some different articles that were online. So if you're interested in her, please go on there and look her up. And um, she continues to work out of uh, University of Berkeley currently and still gives lectures, um, still gives discussions and everything. And so just uh, look her up if you want to uh, know more about her, um, more about her books and some of the articles she's put out. And these are just some references that you can look at. And uh, if you want to go more in depth and uh, read more about Nancy Chattero. So uh, again, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this presentation and have a nice day.